no basic song. What's up, Sushi, and welcome or welcome back to another video with the Stush Live. As you guys have already read from the title, today I'm going to be bringing you guys my Mexico City travel guide video. So you guys know that I recently went to Mexico City, but I wanted to come back on here. I know I gave y'all two vlogs, and I gave you guys a quick lookbook. I wanted to come on here and just break down what I did, how much I paid for certain things that I could remember, and all that good stuff. So that if you are planning a trip to Mexico City, you'll be able to get some more insight from this video. So if you guys are interested, definitely Definitely stay tuned I know this video might attract a new crowd so if you are new here make sure you leave your girl a thumbs up down below and if you've been here make sure you leave your girl a thumbs up down below you already know how it goes if you are new here make sure you also subscribe down below and become a part of the stitch gang and don't forget to also follow my socials on both TikTok and Instagram at the stitch life and without any further ado let's go ahead and get right into it so I do have my iPad right here because I like to write notes down on my iPad just so that I don't for, just so that I don't forget anything so if you see me looking over here then you know what I'm looking at but I'm gonna start at the very beginning but before I start I highly recommend that if you haven't already check out checked out both part one and part two of my Mexico City travel vlogs I highly recommend you guys check those out that will give you guys a lot more insight as to what I'm talking about in this video so I'll leave links up above and down below in the description box so make sure you guys check that out but in the event that you have already seen those videos and you want a little bit more insight then let's move forward so let's start at the very beginning day one when I arrived in Mexico City, Ciudad de Mexico, I stayed at the Sonder. I actually stayed at a Sonder location that was in the Roma area, the Hippodroma area. Let me just get my phone to make sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes. Hippodromo. So yeah, I was in that area, the Roma area and the Hippodromo area. And my sonder was relatively safe. You do use a pin a keypad to keypad to punch in. The building, the front desk staff as well, in addition to security. They did not stay the whole night, but I did feel safe in this neighborhood. Not gonna lie, you are on a busy strip because the autobus or the metro bus is literally right on that strip. It runs along that strip. So you will get a lot of travelers in that area and a lot of locals in that area as well. But I personally felt safe but when you walk out you're walking walking out into the hustle and bustle so just keep that in mind if you plan on staying at that location if you download the Sonder app Sonder is very similar to Airbnb by the way if you download the, the Sonder app you able to you'll be able to search that spot in Mexico City so I'll leave that down below so after checking in get myself situated and you know washed off and everything I decided to go to Galanga Thai so I did read a lot of reviews about this spot and they did say that it was a little bit over hyped but I wanted to check it out nonetheless y'all know I love me some Thai food and yes I was in Mexico City I'm supposed to be eating Mexican cuisine but I had planned to do all of that on my third day y'all already know what happened on the third day but nonetheless I had plans to do that on the third day so I figured why not start the night off fake bringing my birthday at a Thai restaurant and I really like the vibes of the Thai restaurant so I decided to check it out it wasn't too far from my sonder at all I'd say maybe like a eight minute drive i made my way there the ambiance was absolutely beautiful if you saw the vlog you already know drinks were really good i did get the pad thai with soft shell crab about the food the pad thai was good it was good i've had better i've had better but i did kind of expect that because i did read a lot of reviews about the place but the crab definitely needed some work the soft shell crab was just underwhelming in my opinion and the dessert was actually really good a total for galanga thai was probably around 65 us dollars usd 1170 pesos roughly so yes a little bit expensive for mexico city i will say that compared to all some of the other restaurants that you can have that you do have the option to eat at but i wanted to you know experience a little 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 bougie a little luxury on my first night there so i did go to galanga thai staff was really nice as well so day two my actual birthday we started the day off at ojo de agua beautiful scenery i honestly just stumbled upon it and i was like I honestly just stumbled no actually I did not stumble upon it I think prior to my trip to Mexico City I did a lot of research as I'm sure that's what you're doing right now I did a lot, a lot of research and I forgot whose vlog I watched but they said to go here for fresh juice and for horchata different flavors of horchata and I was like oh I have to go check that out so I just ended up ordering food there as well not gonna lie the drinks were a1 horchata 10 out of 10 I got the strawberry horchata I think they had guava and a few other flavors but the strawberry that I had I could honestly eat that drink eat that I could honestly drink that every single day also ordered I believe uh guava no uh star fruit and I want to say 
guava drink that was really good as well just fresh juice they get waffles eggs and bacon turkey bacon i could have lived without it the bacon was okay the eggs was not a fan and the waffles were just straight up cold i did see a lot of people ordering their avocado toast though so maybe that's where i failed i should have probably gotten the avocado toast i think they're known for their avocado toast next stop was at castillo de chapultepec so you're dropped off outside of the park the castle is inside of a park I was dropped off near the Starbucks entrance parallel to the Museum of Anthropology and from that entrance I'd say it's about <laughs> a 20 minute walk to the castle not gonna lie after you buy your ticket at the castle I think I paid $90 or 90 pesos sorry 90 pesos relatively cheap FYI 90 pesos is, is rounded to be around five US dollars so I paid that and I believe that did include the pass for me to record inside of the castle. Once you buy your ticket, I would say it's another like 10 to 15 minute walk up the hill to get to the castle. Absolutely stunning. I highly recommend if you visit Mexico City, check that castle out. It is beautiful. I highly recommend checking the castle out. After that, I did go to some galleries. The drive to the galleries were roughly 10 minutes from Castillo de Chapultepec. When I looked at the map, we were still relatively close, but Mexico's traffic is crazy. So just be prepared, I guess, depending on what time you go. Expect traffic, but I'm pretty sure it's almost always busy. I did visit at the end of their winter, beginning of spring. It was still busy girl so my plan was to go to casa gilardi but you do have to make reservations i did not know that prior to getting in my uber and driving over there so make sure you make reservations i think you can call or even email see the house it's an architect's house that he once resided in so after i was declined entrance to the house it was totally fine it wasn't meant to be i just wanted to take my cute picture outside anyways and did that period after that, I decided to just walk the area because I saw that there were a lot of other galerias in the area. So I did go to the Patricia Conte Museum. That was for you. Just have to ring a bell. And a lot of these galleries are very discreet. Like they're in these random, beautiful houses that you don't even know a gallery is there unless you really like pull out the map to figure it out or unless you're a local, right? So I went to the Patricia Conte Gallery. I also went to Cari, Cari, Zuto, Cari Zuto. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I'll leave it on the screen right here. I went to that gallery and I also went to GAM Gallery, Galeria de Mexico. Galeria, Galeria Arte Mexico. That's what it was. Mexico's Art Gallery. I went there as well. Also beautiful. And I went on a wednesday and absolutely no one was in there i felt like i had a private viewing of all of these galleries and it was amazing so i really enjoyed the fact that i was in there solo that was just me i enjoyed it so i'd say go on a weekday if you want to avoid you know the peoples and things i got a little hungry i knew that i was going to dinner later on in the night so i didn't really want to eat too much so i did stop at this spot called Cancino. i saw that there was fried calamari on the menu so in true stitchy fashion she ordered calamari and she also ordered a mojito mojito 10 out of 10. they know how to make drinks there calamari however i would not recommend on a scale of one to ten i give it a zero it was not good at all i did see that they had pizza so maybe the pizza is good i feel like they might be known for the pizza moral of the story if somewhere is known for a certain thing in mexico go for that don't try to order something new to be fancy i.e ojo de agua i should have went with the avocado toast but i realized after so so after that i went back to the roma area just decided to walk just to explore the neighborhood in which my sonda was located and i did just pass by parque mexico now there is another park, it's called Parque España, but I didn't get to check that one out. But if you are visiting, I recommend going to both. I thought I was in Parque España at one point, but I indeed was not. <laughs> because Parque Mexico is so big, I thought I was in España, but I was not. So just check out both of them. When I return, and I will return, I'll be going to Parque España just to check that out. Now for dinner that night, my birthday night. I decided to go to Taboo because people are always talking about Taboo. I know Taboo is the place to be if you're in Mexico. Now I just happened to look up Taboo Mexico City and realized that there was one in Polanco. So shout out to me because I figured I was not going to touch, touch Taboo unless I touched Tulum. But there was a Taboo in Mexico City. So vibes 10 out of 10, service 10 out of 10. They bring you like this antipasto platter type of thing with hummus, hummus, hummus and all that. 
so that was good i also ordered the octopus that was decent i'd give it like a seven i've had a lot of good octopus so just trust me when i say this my tacos got me sick the salmon tacos i do not recommend ordering salmon tacos from them i'm just gonna say it here i was out for the count for a whole 24 if you know you know watch the vlog if you haven't already and they also came out with a nice dessert for me for my birthday because i did tell them it was my birthday and they made me feel like i was not alone even though i don't mind being alone I really felt the love I really felt the love you know sometimes people come out and these the service come out and they sing but it's just a dead sing no they were vibing with me they made me feel like a birthday girl and I really really enjoyed that now my tab at taboo ran me maybe like $85 US if I remember correctly it ran me around $85 US but this is taboo this is taboo, so upper echelon, real nice, real fancy, real bougie. I, think I was even close to like the Louis Vuitton store and stuff. Like it was in that area, that shopping area. So if you're looking for a good time, check out taboo. It was decent. I would return, but I'm not getting fish. Just off vibes, I would return. Day three, I woke up dying, but I had a tour. I booked a tour with TripAdvisor, and this tour was to go to Somelico e casa azul frida Kahlo's house so we started the tour at casa amiga which was some which was maybe like 10 minutes from my sonder from there you jump on a tour bus and you head to rafael's silver shop where there's a lot of silver for you to choose from a lot of magnets and things like that i'll show you guys everything that i got on the trip towards the end but i did pick up a few pieces from his shop and then from there you're brought to frida Kahlo's house in Coyoacan. There is a line at Frida Kahlo's house. There's always a line at Frida Kahlo's house. We arrived at her house, I want to say at 11 a.m. And I heard some of the staff saying they are booked out for the day, like no more tickets. That's it. So I just for that, I'd recommend going with a tour to Frida Kahlo's house. I did, however, read some reviews of people saying that regardless of the fact you have to join that line. But I will say with this tour that I went with, we skipped the line because the tickets were, were bought in advance. And we literally like walked past another tour. Like they were like, um, excuse me, we were here first. And they were like, well, these people had an 11 o'clock spot, 11 o'clock slot, they're going through. So for the tour, I did pay $70 and it was for us to go to Rafael's spot, the silver spot, Frida Kahlo's house, Somelico, and walk through Coyacan. And we also went to Universidad de Mexico. So at Frida Kahlo's house, hope y'all are with me. I did pay, I want to say, an extra 30 pesos to rec to take pictures inside because you're not allowed to record inside, but you can take pictures inside for an extra fee. So I paid, I want to say, 30 pesos to take pictures inside. I was speeding through her house. If you watch the vlog, you know I felt horrible. Um, but after Frida Kahlo's house, we did walk through Coyoacan. And with that tour, we did stop for churros. I didn't eat because I was dying. And then after that, we went to check out a church. If I can remember the name of the church, I will put it on the screen, but I was out of it. I was literally holding on by a thread. After we left the church, we got on the tour bus to go to a seafood restaurant. Again, did not eat at the restaurant, but I was asking some of my friends on the tour, some of the people that I met on the tour. I was not being antisocial, y'all, shout out to me. But I did ask some of the people on the tour how the food was, and they said it was okay. They did bring us to a seafood restaurant. After that, we did go to Universidad de Mexico to check out the murals by both Diego Rivera and Hector. Can't remember the other guy's name. Wow, can't believe I forgot that already but it's in the vlog so i do recommend this tour i'm not gonna lie i feel like they could have sped things up just a, just a little bit but that's that on day three i was walking to this place called hule to get iced chai tea latte but i passed this place called make vibes looked absolutely absolutely this vibes were dreamy so i decided to stop in it kind of looked like a parisian cafe i've never been to paris but it looked like it belonged in paris so i decided to sit down there they came out with fresh fruit like one server would just come out with fresh fruit and she would offer you yogurt if you wanted to a, a side of granola she had that for you and then another waitress would come out with a tray of champagne and orange juice if you wanted a mimosa they, they provided you with that another server would come out with fresh bread an assortment of different pastries if you wanted that and then 
then your regular server would come and take your food order. So the vibes are definitely there. I feel like they mastered the aesthetic they wanted to create. I asked my waiter to choose something from me because I just could not figure out what I wanted. I don't remember the name of what I got, but it was basically three corn tortillas layered. On one layer was um, black beans and cheese. Second layer was meat, uh, chicken, and the third layer was vegetables. And it was sitting in this nice tomato sauce. It was really, really good. Honestly, some of the best food that I ate in Mexico. My plans were to eat traditional Mexican food on day three which is the day of the tour, being that I would be in the Coyoacan neighborhood, but I was sick. And for the last day, the fourth day, which is the day that we're talking about now. So I was really only able to get what I could on the last day. So I had this three layered Mexican dish. It was really, really good. I rated it like a nine out of 10. It was really good. After that, I wanted to go to Bella Arte, but Bella Arte was closed. It's a beautiful art museum in Mexico City. It was closed, so I didn't get to do that. So that's on the list for the next time. I passed through Chinatown, which is literally just like one street. It was cute to see. I did see them selling different flavored bao buns like ube and stuff like that, but I didn't get any of that because I was still kind of full from breakfast. Oh, now my battery down. I'm sorry about that, guys. So I'm professional, so I'm professional. It's honestly my first time recording a sit down video since returning from Ciudad de Mexico. So she's still, she's a little rusty, but she's gonna get back. But back to what I was saying, the orientation might have changed just a little bit. So after leaving Chinatown, I knew that I wanted to go to Templo Mayor. So I pulled out my handy dandy Google Maps. Shout out to T-Mobile for that Canada and Mexico coverage. Cause she really got me through this whole trip, I swear to God. So I pulled out my maps and I started to walk. I stumbled upon this strip, beautiful strip, reminding me again of something that would probably be in Paris. Mexico City is absolutely beautiful, you guys. I could truly see myself living there. I understand why so many people are flocking <laughs> to live in Mexico City. Do your research, just do your research, yeah. But this one strip was a sight to see. I passed Bella Arte and just kept going and going and going. This is where I saw Bershka, I saw Zara, I saw adidas i saw the coca-cola store I saw so many different stores so one thing that i do know is that this strip that i walked along was pretty close to mercado de san juan which is a market that a lot of people recommend you go to but once i got to templo mayor i don't remember how much i paid to enter but i know it was less than ten dollars when i say all of these museums are really cheap you should check it out and there's so much culture so much history in mexico city you can't go there and not check out half of these places i really wanted to check this out because i wasn't able to go to tio tecan tio tecan tio i don't know how to pronounce it y'all i'm sorry <laughs> don't kill me mexicans don't kill me but i wasn't able to go to the pyramids which was right maybe like 30 minutes out from Mexico City so I figured why not check out Templo Mayor so I could kind of get the vibe I know it's not the same thing but I kind of get the vibes but after Templo Mayor I realized that there was an El Moro nearby so I walked to El Moro which was one of their famous churro spots I'm sure the locals are like El Moro ain't nothing and El Moro is a tourist spot it was really good it was really really good so good that I went there twice in the same day but after El Moro, I jumped into an Uber because I wanted to go to Mercado Roma, which was near my Sonder slash Airbnb. It wasn't until after I got in my Uber that I realized Mercado de San Juan was near. Had I known this prior to jumping in the Uber, I would have went to Mercado de San Juan, but it's okay next time. At Mercado Roma, they had a lot of different food vendors inside of this market. I saw Mexican paella, taco spots, I saw burgers, ton of different things that you could choose from. So I ate at the vendor that was on the left when you walk, when you just walk in. I can't remember the name, but they are the only vendor I believe that sells bone marrow tacos. So I did order bone marrow tacos and I also ordered the beef tacos. The beef tacos are really good. The bone marrow was okay. I've had bone marrow in the past. It was okay. It was okay at this location, but the beef tacos, no steak tacos, sorry. The steak tacos were really good. I want to say I paid six US dollars for these tacos and I feel like it was only that expensive that's not expensive but it was only that expensive because of the area I was in more of a tourist area had it been on the street or even at more of a local spot this one was a little bit more uppity it would have been way cheaper and then after that I just walked around the area I went through Parque Mexico I strolled through Parque Mexico one more time 
So those are all the places that I stopped at during my trip to Mexico City to see that de Mexico. I will go ahead and leave down below in the description box places that I recommend you guys check out that I wasn't able to check out that I will be checking out on my next trip. When I say day three really took me out, tacos from Taboo really took me out because I had plans to come home after that tour and go outside and eat, but I didn't because I was dying. I literally was dying. I got like 24 hour food poisoning, if that's even a thing. So I'll go ahead and leave some recommendations down below of places that you guys should check out if you guys are traveling to Mexico City. So check the description box. But before we end the video, I do wanna just show you guys some of the things that I brought home from Mexico City so that I could forever remember my first solo international trip. So the first thing is actually something that I'm currently wearing. I think I might've showed you guys this briefly this ring I actually picked up at the silver shop which was our first stop on the Somilico tour where you ride in the Trajenejas along the river along the Somilico river along the Somilico river if you guys saw the vlog you guys saw that but that was all included in the tour but the first stop on the tour was at the silver shop and I picked up this silver ring isn't it cute it's a butterfly so Mexico is the number one producer of silver in the country. I did not know that, but Google it, look it up, it's true. I learned this while in Mexico City. So that being said, silver is reasonable in Mexico City. So I did pick this up at Rafael's store and he does carve everything by hand. So in addition to this ring, I also picked up this magnet for the house. I picked this magnet up for the house. Mexicans are also very religious. I definitely saw a lot of iglesias. I walked into a few iglesias churches in Mexico. So I wanted to pick this one up. This one retailed for 195 pesos, but I do remember my total for these two being $45. So that's not bad, a real silver ring and a magnet. That's not bad at all, in my opinion. Next stop was Frida Kahlo's house, and y'all know I love pins, so I had to go ahead and pick up a pin. I got this one right here. I did see a few other pins, but this one was the most unique to me, so I went ahead and picked this one up. This one was 100 pesos. Then I also picked up another magnet. This one says, Viva La Vida. And I got this because it's reminiscent of her last painting that she did before she died, which was the which was the painting of the fruits, specifically the watermelons. So I went ahead and picked this one up just as a reminder that, you know, I went to Frida Kahlo's house. Even though I was dying inside her house, I was fighting for my life inside her house. I picked this up and this one was 135 pesos. At Somilico, I, when I was on the Trajineja, a guy came on the Trajineja and he was selling silver yet again. Now, as if I didn't just buy a ring early on in the day, he made me buy another ring. He reduced the price for me, I'm not gonna lie. He did reduce the price because I was like, mm, I just bought a ring, I don't really need that. Da -da 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 -da. So he reduced the price for 500, 500 pesos. At first he was trying to sell it to me for like 700 pesos, but he dropped it down to 500 pesos. So another silver ring, but this one has the mother of pearl. Can y'all see? this ring she is stunning stunning and my friend on the boat that i met on the tour he was like no you gotta get that you gotta get that and i'm like all right fine and he dropped it down to 500 so i went ahead and purchased it i'll do the math again for y'all i'm sorry kind of inconsistent 500 pesos is 26 us dollars real silver mother of pearl be for real so on the fourth day, the last full day in Mexico City, I was walking to Templo Mayor and there were a lot of vendors on the street. And this one vendor had this Sacred Heart, very similar actually to the Sacred Heart. It's a red stone. I don't know what this stone is called. Ruby Garnet, not sure. I don't know, but I saw this and I had to have it. You could just loop a chain right through the top. How cute and if you know, you know, the Sacred Heart, Mexico, it goes together. So I got this as well. I don't know how much I paid for this. I wanna say I gave him 200 pesos for this right here, for this pendant. I'm pretty sure I gave him 200 pesos. And then I picked this up for my mother at another vendor. This is a bracelet with a ton of different stones. So her favorite color is black. She's a weirdo, I know. A lot of y'all might like black. I don't know. I just feel like why I like black when you could like pink. Anyways, I picked this bracelet up for her and it has a ton of different stones on it. How pretty is this? I don't remember how much I paid for this 
at the second vendor but I had to get it for her. So yeah, those are all the things that I bought while in a Mexico City. I did also bring home a ton of snacks. I did try a lot of them already, but I brought home some snacks as well. But I'm not gonna lie, I feel bad because I feel like I didn't have any tequila in Mexico. Who the hell goes to Mexico and doesn't have tequila? I'm telling you, the third day really took me out. I'm coming back with a vengeance. But I hope you guys have really, really enjoyed my Mexico City travel guide. Let me know if you guys have Mexico City on your list of places to visit. If you don't, you need to add it to your place. You need to add it to a list. It is absolutely beautiful there. But I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this travel guide. Feel free, I say this loudly, feel free to drop any questions that you have down below about my travel to Mexico City. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this video. Definitely be sure to check out part one and points and part two of my Mexico City travel vlog. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave your girl a thumbs up down below. Subscribe down below as well. If you made it all the way to the end, be sure to also subscribe down below, join the Stush Gang, and also follow me on my socials, me on TikTok and on Instagram at the Stush Life. And until the next video, I'll see you guys all later. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Bye.